penultimate day of my Baja Divide. So yeah, it's all coming to an end. And this is the guy that's got me around everywhere. So it's just um, sunset now, so I'm going to camp here, just away from the main track, which is over there. So we got 2017 Surly Troll, we've got some 26 inch, 3 inch wheels, um, WTB Ranger tyres, these guys have been good, running tubeless, they're probably coming to the end of their life a bit, losing a bit of grip, um, but yeah, they've all been really good, the only thing I've had an issue with was the valve, I think it was the rear one, snapped on me, so I had to replace that at the side of the road, which was a bit of a pain in the ass. Then we've got a uh, 1x11 drivetrain, it's an 11 to 46 on the back, this is a Sunrace one, and the race face uh, cranks, this is a 30 tooth on the front. Uh, M7000, the SLX derailleur, things been good, XT shifters, TRP disc brakes, it's all been, all been pretty good. Bags wise, Apertura, uh, seat bag, I generally keep clothes and miscellaneous junk in here, and there's tools right down at the bottom, heavy stuff, just keep light stuff here. Um, on the back here, little gorilla pod thing, used to have a ball head on it, that fell off. And here we got my beloved skank buff. Um, so this is just my buff that I use for cleaning up shit that spills everywhere or wiping my hands. Um, if I get, I don't know, caramel sauce on them, which happens. Um, up at the front, help kit, uh, dry bag, it's got a couple holes in, and thermal rest pad is my sleeping pad, which has been a bit of a lifesaver really, because everything inflatable that I've bought no longer inflates, and I've had so many thorns poking in this thing, so I'm glad. I don't have an inflatable, and inside the uh, dry bag is sleeping gear, sleeping bags, down jacket, kind of bulky but lightweight stuff. Um, I was connected on to a little Alp kit, I think it's called the Kanga Harness. Um, and then this bag, you're supposed to wrap around this one, but I just found it's easier to just kind of rest it on top, clip it on with a couple of carabiners, stuff it bouncing around, and this carries all stuff that I need during the day. Um, like e-reader, money, it's got head torch, batteries, all sorts of bits in there. GPX, Luminade no longer inflates but that acts as a light. Camelback bottle and here I usually keep my phone and headphones. I lost my headphones yesterday though so just my phone. Occasionally some snacks and then more snacks in here, camera, a little action camera which I'm using to film this. He lives in there for easy access. And then, main camera bag, just I've tied on the side here. This is just my Sony camera, which just kind of lives in there. So he's easy to access at all times. And hopefully he doesn't bash on the wheel too much. And then got another lens in here, and another lens in there. And then frame bag, just keep food in there. And... Um, I got some tools down at the very bottom corner and in the long stretches where I needed loads of water there'd be some water in there as well but now I just run a litre here, a litre and a half on each fork and that's fine at the moment because I'm never more than a day's ride really without some sort of resupply. So yeah, that is it. Um, oh, brick saddle saves my butt. And I keep my um, spare inner tube, he just lives there. You kind of just find places to put random stuff. Oh yeah, bottle cages on the back. So yeah, I used to have another bottle cage here. That snapped off. This one also has snapped, 
but not completely. So it still kind of holds on. And um, I used to use to keep some little bottles of electrolyte stuff here, or extra water. Um, but like I said, I went. I, I don't have any sections where I need huge amounts of water anymore, so um, they didn't really get used uh, for the latter part of the trip. Only really at the start when I needed them. And that's about it. So this is now two years later. I'm just going to go through a detailed gear list rundown of everything I bought with me to Baja. So yeah, we'll start with clothes that I wore on the bike. So I always had two sets of clothes, one for on the bike, one for off the bike. This was on the bike. This merino top, you can see it's got some holes in it. This was from Alp Kit, a bit sun bleached on the back. So yeah, merino purely just because it's naturally antibacterial. Um, so it's not going to end up stinking after four days of wearing it. Um, it's also UV protective and it also holds water really well so that when you're sweat it's not evaporating and getting wicked away from the skin immediately it actually holds it in the material a bit more um, so it keeps you cooler shorts are these Katmandu cargo shorts got some zips on the side they're quick dry and um, yeah they've been really good um, you can see I've worn these for about 10,000 kilometers now and they haven't worn away or anything in the crotch. They've got loads of life left in them. These are really good. I wore some chamois shorts every day on the bike. These are merino wool Alp kit for the same reasons. You can see the chamois in the middle. I always wore, this is a UV buff. So I'll just wear this around my neck at all times to protect the back of my neck from getting sunburnt. And then if a really dusty car would drive past, you can um, put it over your face, stop dust and stuff getting in your mouth. Just stops you relying on sun cream so much and feeling all greasy. I also had these UV sleeves. So I just stick these on both arms for the middle of the day. Again, for the same reasons. Sun cream only blocks so much. The best thing to do is to cover up. Oh, the same for my legs. Um, these again, UV sleeves for your legs. Didn't use these quite so much. My legs don't really get burnt as much as my arms do. Um, mainly use these for keeping warm. Boris. Yeah, mainly use these for keeping warm at night, but yeah, good to rely on not having to use sun cream, especially at the start of the trip when I was really pale coming from English winter. Hadn't had a base tan yet. Then had this blue windbreaker. This is by Alpkit. Yeah, really good, super lightweight layer and it folds up into its own pocket. So you can just have that on the front of the bike and then if you're going on downhill, you can just quickly shove it on and um, keeps you a bit warmer. DHB gloves, just got a little bit of padding, fingerless. I've had these for over 10 years. Um, these are mainly just to protect your hands um, from fatigue. And if you fall off the bike and you scrape your hands, um, these just give that little bit of extra protection. And then I had Alp kit merino socks so they don't get stinky. Shoes. Freerider 510s. Um, they got really good grippy soles. These are the best ones for sort of flat pedals. Um, and I wore these off the bike casually as well. This is my only bit of footwear. Only downside to these is they take a long time to dry. Oh, and a helmet. Yeah, just always wore this helmet. Some people like wearing a, a sun hat. Um, I prefer helmet because if you're cycling on your own, you fall off and hit your head. Um, bad thing is going to happen. So I always wear a helmet. So that was all the clothes on the bike. Now for the clothes off the bike. Okay, so these are my off the bike clothes. Got some Icebreaker Merino undies. Alp kit, lightweight Merino again, t-shirt. Icebreaker, merino, again, leggings. 
So I didn't bring any trousers with, with me. I just bought leggings because, I mean, these pack a lot smaller than any pair of trousers would and keep you just as warm. Down jacket, this one's from Patagonia. Just um, standard lightweight ja down jacket. Because I had a super lightweight sleeping bag, this thing's really good just to put on as an extra layer and to keep you warm in the evenings. You don't need a um, crazy down jacket for Baja, but it does get cold at night. Now I did bring a raincoat, but I didn't actually use it in Baja apart from wearing to keep warm. Um, but if you can find the lightest weight raincoat you can. Um, it does rain in Baja sometimes, so I guess it's good to have that protection. And woolly hat would wear this. Um, a lot of the time at night and in the mornings whenever it got cold. So for my sleep system, I had ultralight sleeping bag. This is an out kit, Pipe Dream 200. Comfort 10, limit seven degrees. We definitely had cold nights than that. Um, but that's why I just layered up with sleeping bag and leggings. You have a few cold nights with a sleeping bag like this, but it's just nice to having something small and lightweight. I'd recommend just bringing, yeah, really lightweight sleeping bag. Um, then I also had the sleeping bag inside a Tyvek bivy bag that I made. It was mainly just to protect it from dust and dirt um, and getting wet if it did rain, but it didn't. Um, you don't really need a bivy bag. Then I had my sleeping mat, which was the Z Light one you saw in the last video. That thing was really good. It's just nice not having to inflate something and then you could just dump down on lunch times to take a siesta wherever you are and not worry about it getting punctured, which is a big pro. Um, I did bring a pillow with me at the start. Um, it was a Trekology one that ended up breaking. I think it was on my first night or something. It deflated on me. So that thing was rubbish. I threw that away. Um, I did bring a ground sheet with me, just an ultra light, thin bit of plastic. Again, that got torn to bits within the first few days. So I ended up ditching that. Don't really need a ground sheet. Oh yeah, I had an ultralight tarp. So the lightest tarp I had was one off um, a DD jungle hammock. So I took that with me. Um, but I didn't really need it because it didn't really rain. Um, but it's good to have it for peace of mind just in case it does rain. And with that I bought some uh, tent pegs for sand and snow which you need for camping on beaches because a standard tent peg isn't going to hold up on a, on a beach. Um, what I would do next time is instead of bringing a raincoat and a tarp, I'd bring like a three meter by three meter poncho. Um, and then you can just use that for one as a raincoat if it does rain and two, you can use it as a little tarp to um, keep you dry if it does um, rain at night. Cook system. So I did bring a little wood stove, which is a, a tiny little metal box. I'll flash a picture up. Um, but one of the hinge bits fell off within a week or two. And it was also really annoying trying to find twigs small enough to put in it um, to make a fire. So I ended up getting rid of that and I would just make campfires, which was way easier because you can chuck on any old branch. Um, and I brought along a titanium pot as well because I thought I might be eating um, noodles, rice, um, that sort of thing a lot more often and for, for coffees. Um, but I didn't use it that much. Mainly my diet was fresh food and you know, like avocado, tortillas and beans. You get these little packets of beans, which I would eat all the time. Um, so I actually ended up losing that at the end of the trip on the Cape Loop. Um, you don't really need to bring a pot or any sort of co uh, cook system. So I wouldn't bother bringing one next time. Um, I had two lighters, one of which got stolen by a mouse. Um, that's just for starting campfires and a spork. I had a plastic spork with me that snapped um, about halfway through the trip. So I had to use this tiny little spork. Um, so I'd recommend getting one of the metal titanium ones. Okay, tools wise. So I had this um, Lezine pump. It's got the pressure gauge on it. This is the high volume variant. Um, it's just quicker to pump up high volume tires. This thing's really good. And I always wrap some uh, Gorilla Tape around the top of it. Gorilla tape is just really useful for fixing loads of things and you can use it to patch up your tire as a tire boot if you need to. 
sealant. I used orange seal. Um, you can use whatever sealant you want, but this stuff's really good. And this is just a squeezy bottle that you can inject straight into your tire should you need to top up. So I bought a few, a couple of spare valves. This is just one off an old inner tube and a valve core remover. So I did have a valve break on me. Um, it just, the whole thing snapped when I was adjusting my tire pressure. So I had to take the whole tire off the bead and stick a new one of these in um, at the side of the road. And luckily I managed to find um, a truck driver with a compressor to get it back on the bead again. Which is why I also bought one of these. So this is a Schrader to Presta valve adapter so that if you do need to use a compressor off a truck, um, you can use it with your standard Presta valves because most of these are Schrader car valves. So bring one of those and bring a couple of spare valves in case you snap your valve um, for tubeless and a valve core remover, which just means you can um, open up your valve core and you can squirt t sealant directly into your wheel um, without having to take it off the bead. Or if something happens with your valve core, you can replace it and tighten it up. I usually find with those Lesine pumps, because um, they screw on to the thread for pumping up, when you undo them sometimes, it can unscrew your valve core. So definitely bring a tiny little valve core tool with you. Most bike shops will have loads of these lying around. I bought a little curved needle and some dental flosses thread so that if I did slash my tire wall, um, you can just use this to stitch it up without having to um, take your tire off the bead. Got some tubeless plugs. So if you do get a massive hole in your tire that the sealant isn't going to fix, you can just grab one of these, um, snap a bit of this off. These are like these little rubber brown bogies. And you just shove it in the hole and the sealant will fill up the rest of the gap. So always bring a bunch of these and this little thing with it. Some super glue, just really handy for fixing all things. This is a little one gram thing of super glue for fixing all sorts of stuff. And you can use this to help fix your tire if you do slash your sidewall. Um, some patches and a spare inner tube. Always bring those just in case. Tire boot. I think I bought some tire boots with me, but you can just use Gorilla Tape or yeah, you can use anything as a tire boot. A bit of plastic and some super glue will do the job. Zip ties, bring a few zip ties of different sizes, really useful. Um, multi-tool, goes without saying, need a multi-tool, definitely need, you need basically everything you need to take your entire bike apart, um, should you need to, for getting it on planes and stuff. So I needed um, eight mil hex to take my cranks off, four mil and a five mil for doing the rest of the bolts on the bike, and a T20 or T25 um, Torx, bit for doing my disc rotors and this one also comes with a chain, chain breaker and a spoke key which is really useful. Tire lever for getting your tire off should you need. Chain lube, I use this stuff, squirt, really good dry lube. Um, this thing works best if you put it on at night um, and let it dry out and then cycle it rather than trying to cycle on it when it's still wet. But yeah, really good stuff. I'd apply this maybe twice a day, um, once at night and once when I stop for lunch or if I ended up going through a puddle, I'd reapply. And yeah, chain cloth as well. So just any old bit of rag, you can just cut up an old t-shirt and use that to clean your chain up. You can bring some spare bike cables, like a brake cable and a shifter cable. I personally didn't because it's a bit awkward to carry with me. I didn't need one. A couple of quick links for your chain, um, should you need to do any chain repair. Um, you know, they're small and light. You can also bring a small section of chain if you need to repair a bit of it. I don't think I bothered bringing, out, bringing one I didn't need. Spokes, I had a couple of spare spokes just stuffed in my handlebars because I had flat bars. So I just popped them inside the handlebars and put the end caps back on. Spare brake pads, I bought some at Fast Bike. Ended up changing my brake pads when I got to Moulahay um, and they were very well worn out by then. So probably changed them a bit earlier than Moulahay, but yeah, you'll definitely need spare brake pads. 
So yeah, water and health stuff. So I did have a three liter Camelback with me in my um, frame bag with the tube so I could drink while cycling. Um, that ended up getting a hole in it towards the end of the trip. So I threw away that. I also had this Evernew bottle, which is one and a half liters, folds up really small. Um, I ended up getting a hole in one of these as well towards the end of the trip. So ended up throwing that away. This is a replacement one. Um, then I had one of these little Camelback podiums, which I would have on top at all times. Um, and then I had cargo cages by Blackburn on two on the fork and one on the down tube. So I'd always keep sort of a liter and liter and a half on the down tube. And I generally not use that one. I just keep it as a spare and then use the ones on the forks and in my feed bags. Um, and I also had the little drinks cages on the back, which would carry sort of little 500 milliliter bottles of electrolytes and stuff. Um, they kind of broke towards the end of the trip though. You can get Camelback podium in a bigger, this is actually an insulated one. Um, I didn't have this one with me at the time, but yeah, these are good. So sun cream wise, I use this stuff called Skinnies, which is from, it's a New Zealand company. And it's basically a, it's a sun cream concentrate. So most sun cream is about 50% water and this stuff is 0% water. It's just pure sun cream. And you only need like a pea size amount and it covers your whole face and ears and it lasts for ages as well. So I had a tiny little 35 milliliter bottle of sun cream that lasted me for most of the trip. So I'd recommend getting some, getting some of that. Um, chamois butter, I use this stuff. Um, yeah, just apply this you know, once a day, twice a day, depending on how much you need. Stops your butt getting red raw. Would definitely recommend using that. Yeah, toilet roll, I would just keep with me on the front of my bike and I would burn it in campfires rather than leaving it out. Um, yeah, toilet roll takes a long time to break down um, out in the wild. So I usually burn it in the campfires. I also took some alcohol gel and paracetamol with me, alcohol gel, just for cleaning your hands or if you get a cut or something, you can clean it with some alcohol gel. Um, I didn't really bring a first aid kit. It's up to you if you wanna bring that. And I think I had some biodegradable soap as well, um, just for washing clothes, pots and pans if you need to, wash your body, um, and you can wash in the rivers without worrying about contaminating them. Then on the bike, so yeah, I had my Garmin E-Trex 20 as my main source of navigation. All the Baja Divide maps are on that. Um, that just takes two AA batteries and they would last sort of three to four days on a set of AA's. And I'd always have two sets of batteries. So every time I got to a new place, uh, I just buy a new set of batteries and ditch the old ones. <clears throat> but yeah, that thing's really good, super rugged. You can get lithium AA batteries, which I think last for like 20 days, so even better. Yeah, I had a rear bike light, but I didn't really need that because I didn't do any cycling in the dark. And um, bike lock. So I didn't bring any sort of bike lock. Well, I did have one. I had a massive D-lock with me when I was in America just for when I was cycling around LA and San Diego because my bike would definitely have got nicked there. Um, but I left at a hostel in San Diego and did the whole of the Baja Divide without a bike lock. It was totally fine. Um, if you are going to bring a bike lock, just bring a like a super light wire lock or none at all. Okay, so camera electronics wise, so I took my Sony A7, that was the original Sony A7. Um, so I'm actually shooting this on the newer Sony A7 III. Um, I've got rid of the original Sony A7 since then. And with it, lens wise, I bought um, mainly this 50 mil, this is the old Olympus. Um, this is a 24 Olympus. These are just manual lenses from my film camera. And then this is the adapter to convert them onto Sony mount. And then I also had a 100 mil with me. I hardly ever use the 100 mil though. So I'd probably just bring 50 mil on a 24 or just a 35 lens if you have access to one. Yeah, a little ultralight tripod, this thing. I have a heavier duty gorilla pod, but it weighed too much for my needs. So this one was just super lightweight. I did have a ball head with it, um, but I lost the ball head. So um, 
yeah, it was fun. And action camera, I had this little Xiaomi Yi 4K action camera with me. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good, but action cameras have got a lot better since this one came out. Um, uh, one thing I would definitely have bought, well, I'll go through that in a minute, but yeah, I bought that. I also had a chest mount. Um, chest mount was really big and bulky. I ended up throwing it away, I think, at the end of the trip. And I had a plastic case to make it waterproof, but the clip ended up falling off on a downhill. Um, so the waterproof case never closed after that point. So I wasn't able to use it in the sea or anything after that. Batteries and cards. So yeah, had all the memory cards, batteries and chargers that I needed for, for those things, along with uh, anchor. What capacity is this? It's like 16,000 milliamp hour battery pack which was just useful for charging everything up, but it's really slow to charge, um, especially with, um, depending on what charger you have. The phone I bought with me was just my OnePlus 5, and then I used Maps on this with OSM and, which is just a free app. So I downloaded the Baha Divide route on that so I could swipe in and out easily and look where I was going up next. Um, yeah, good to have a phone with you. Some earphones, really useful. So I used to listen to podcasts and music pretty much every day when cycling. Couldn't really live without these. <clears throat> I bought an e-reader e with me, um, which is really useful because you often wake up before sunrise um, and you need something to do. So you can either listen to a podcast or you can do a bit of reading. Um, I was worth bringing that. And then likewise, I had a little head torch and then I had an inflatable luminade. Um, which is a little solar panel, has a little solar panel on the top and charges itself. Um, but that ended up getting a hole in it so it wouldn't inflate anymore. So I ended up getting rid of that eventually. So things I would bring next time. So I'd bring sturdier water bottles. So I was just gonna rely on the water bottles that I could buy in Mexico for carrying all my water, but the Baja Divide is such a rough route that I'd find that they'd end up cracking and getting holes in and you really can't afford to get a hole in your water bottle in the middle of the desert. So next time I'd bring sturdier water bottles and take the weight penalty, um, something like a Nalgene. The other benefit of these is you can put boiling water in these to sterilize it and put it at the bottom of your sleeping bag um, to act as a little hot water bottle. Um, clothes wise, I would probably bring just like a long sleeve cotton shirt from a charity shop rather than a merino top. Um, it would be a lot cheaper as long as it's UV proof. Um, that'd be really nice because with the buttons up and down you can just open up the buttons to let some wind through and it protects your arms from the sun. I'd bring water purification tablets. Um, I was gonna find some before I left. Um, I had it on my list to buy in America, some water, pu water purification, but I just couldn't find any in the shops, so I didn't bother bring bringing any. Um, but yeah, I kind of wish I had some at certain points in the trip. I would bring a little CO2 cartridge, just to, um, if you do need to do any tire repairs, it and you have to take your tire off the bead, um, the little Lezine pump isn't gonna be powerful enough to get your tire back on the bead, whereas a little CO2 cartridge can help you do that. So I'd bring one of these. They're not very big and heavy. So yeah, as I said before, technology's come a long way. Since then, GoPro have come out with their Hero Black, which has amazing stabilization. I wish I had an uh, action camera with better stabilization when I was there and definitely a wing cover. So much of my video clips, the wind totally ruined the sound. Wind sucks. So I wish I had a little wind cover to put the action camera in. Also, I'd maybe take with me a drone. I've now got a Mavic Air, which I took with me to New Zealand. Those things are amazing. I'd probably bring one of those next time. And I bring a little solar panel. So yeah, rather than just relying on battery power, um, it'd be great with all the sun in Baja if you could charge everything up with the solar panel as you ride. So I've got this little RAV power three panel 
three panel solar panel and it got two USB points that you can plug stuff in and charge stuff as you go. So if you're someone that uses your phone a lot and cameras a lot, having this to be able to charge everything up would just be really useful. Finally, um, fat bike wheels. If you can get hold of a fat bike, that'd be amazing. So yeah, I had my 26 inch by three inch tire Surly Troll which, you know, it's fine, it gets the job done, but there's so many sandy sections that I'd wish, like if I'd, if I had access to a fat bike, I'd definitely bring that to Baja. I've, since I've got back from Baja, I've built up a flat, fat bike and I'd love to ride Baja again with it. It'd be amazing. So yeah, if you can get hold of a fat bike, I'd bring that next time. I think that just about covers everything that I bought. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can go into anything in more detail. Um, and yeah, all the links to stuff will be down in the description. So yeah, hope that helps.